I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Someone offered you the chance to have a genetically perfect baby. A lot of controversy. A designer child. Genetics. Don't you want the best for your they child? Offer you Help you. Well, do you have children made to order? On October 24th, one movie dares to take a look into our future. Life expectancy: 32 years. In the most compelling, chilling, controversial science fiction thriller of the year. How perfect does your child have to be? Gattaca, rated PG-13. Hey, this is Matt once again. What about to another review? This is a review for Trevin. Thank you so much. Uh, if anyone's ever interested in requesting pretty much any type of video, you can either do so by requesting it directly via my PayPal or by joining my Patreon. The links are down below in the info box. Either one. If not, no worries. But if so, thank you so much. But the review, the request for today is Gattaca from 1997. Now, Gattaca... It's a sci-fi film I've heard of for a while, had seen bits and pieces of but never saw all the way through until now. And I just say I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the world. I thought the actors, Ethan Hawke, Jude Law, you got Uma Thurman, Tony Schlub is in this. And I thought they all did a nice job. And this world takes place in the future and deals with genetics and eugenics and about how to use genetics to improve the quality of a human and make a more human than human as perfect as you can be by your DNA and push away those deemed inferior so Hey, you want to have a baby? How do we groom and manipulate this DNA so we can take away the probabilities? The probabilities of heart disease or any other things. And do genetic simulations. So this person will be just deemed so superior based only on your DNA. But then if you're quote an invalid, you're only good for menial jobs like cleaning toilets. So you could be discriminated not by your look, not by your race, not by your sex, but by your, your genes, your DNA, your genetics. And the way, I'm not explaining it as interesting, but I thought the way the movie showed it, the world he created, how Ethan Hawke's character, he is one of these invalids. He's taking the identity of a valid genetic superiority played by Drew Law, which 
he was crippled in an accident. He wants someone to take his place for reasons of his own. Ethan Hart gets the opportunity. Each day he had to meticulously groom and scrub down all of his stuff. From his computers, make sure not a single fingernail, not a single piece of skin, nothing is there. Just if they get it and it's really his, they'll find out his identity, be arrested, and or maybe worse. So he'll have fake blood and fake urine to pass the daily tests and DNA standings. Tony Shalhoub plays a guy who gets in the Jew law. Ernest Borgnine, sadly he's not in the film too much, but he's the boss of Ethan Hawke in the first half when he's doing one of his, his again, lower class jobs. Sally, this other actor's not in the film too much, but Elias Cotius, Casey Jones from the 1990 Ninja Turtles film. He plays Ethan Hawke's dad. And we only see him in the first like third of the movie, Sally. Because they have Ethan Hawke first, the normal way. But then you could tell the parents are a little bit disappointed, so they want a genetically superior child by this genetic simulation. So then he gets a brother. And then they have this thing where they swim and they play chicken with it. And Ethan Hawke's character always loses until one day Ethan Hawke wins. And the brother is shot by that. And then Ethan Hawke, he leaves and then one thing leads to another and he gets to this opportunity where he meets up with Jude Law again. He's one of these superior guys, but he was crippled in an accident. Not many people know about it. So, okay, I want you to be me. And the job is dealing with the space program because Ethan Hawke, he wants to be a navigator in space. He thinks he'll never get to that because of his DNA. But now he has the opportunity. This one interesting scene where Drew Law goes, well, you're not as tall as me. How badly do you want this opportunity? So Ethan Hawke has to get his legs broken in order to get surgery to get his legs extended, <laughs> which I thought was interesting of an idea. Now the movie and Umer Thurman plays a love interest of Ethan Hawke's character. There's a murder that happens, and because of this murder investigation, more about Ethan Hawke's character is known, or possibility of it being known. But really enough, the murder investigation, usually in a, another film, I would be intrigued by that. But here, it was the least interesting part of the movie, because I didn't really get a semblance of murder suspects who did it mystery i wonder who did it who's the red herrings so i didn't feel that kind of a mystery on that and maybe that's not what the movie was going for it's more about will ethan Hawke be found out who he is but i don't know i just part of it just didn't Oh, part of me went, you didn't even need it to be a murder. You could have had the same thing, only be this one person who's a little bit more suspicious. I mean, there's even a point where someone finds an eyelash. I said, wait a minute, this belongs to someone who is an invalid. And the suspense could be conversations and being studied. And maybe they're studying other people, including Ethan Hawke. And you have suspense scenes. Does this person know? Does this person not know? So the whole murder thing, I don't want to say it seems like an afterthought, but it just seems as if it's something at the end of the day that didn't really need to be a part of the movie. This whole murder investigation. It, the fact that it's a murder... I don't know, the fact that it's a murder just seemed 
second or third note in a weird way. I, I know that sounds stupid. I don't know how else to put it. Does it ruin the film? Of all the aspects, it's more the world, the the other parts of the story, Ethan Hawke, Drew Law's character was interesting. You know, figure out reasons why he's doing this. His kind of friendship with Ethan Hawke's character. I, again, I thought both actors did a, a job well done. And it was cool to see people like Elias Coltius and Shalhoub and Ernest Borgnine. It doesn't end on a sequel bay downbeat note or any other stupid note. Ends on a nice note. Well, for one character, our main character ends on a nice note. I'll put it that way. It was a good looking film. I like the, it's a world that's very clean and because of how these people are, everything is it's a it's a film that has a good cinematography to a good look to it very total opposite of say the world of Alien or Blade Runner which is fine it doesn't have to look the same a more cleaner future is fine as well and it makes sense in this uh, storyline it's from a director that I don't know a lot of his stuff. I know he worked with Ethan Hawke again. I want to say he's called Good Kill or something like that. Uh, I could be wrong on that. I think he did that one with the guy from NSYNC called End Time. And the fact that I can't remember the actor who was in the band NSYNC. Just wow! I can't. Rem I can't. I remember. Believe I can't. remember his name. This shows how much I listen to NSYNC, huh? I would say, but I probably put a song of fucking Backstreet Boys instead, and that's how much I know about them. But was it Justin Timberlake? I want to say it was Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Yeah, Justin Timberlake. Okay, yeah, that's who I was thinking of. <laughs> but anyway, I, I believe the director did that film. And I want to look at what else he has done. I remember seeing End Time once and not really caring for it. Lord of War, that was a Nicolas Cage film. I'm like, eh. To be honest, I don't remember anything about it, so I can't even tell you if it's in uh, He helped write the Truman Show, which I liked. Oh, he did Simone. I actually like Simone with Al Pacino. That's a film that had a lot of crap, a lot of shit, but Simone I thought was pretty good. Simone I thought was fairly decent of a movie. And to be honest, bit more prevalent today when you look at the storyline the storyline is Simone is Al Pacino creates a movie star out of the computer and in this world of deep fates it, yeah, it seems a bit more <laughs> prevalent now than it did back then but yeah Simone I never th I thought was a decent film oh my god He's, well, at one point he was writing the Monopoly movie. Yes. At one point, Ridley Scott was going to direct the Monopoly movie. Yes, on the board game. Hasbro announced a live action version of Monopoly, Action Man, and Hundry Hundry Hippos. Twenty fifteen Hasbro announced that Lion Key will distribute a Monopoly film with Andrew Nichol writing the film as a family friendly action adventure film. At one point in twenty nineteen, 
Kevin Hart would star and Tim Story would direct. What the fuck would a Monopoly movie be? You're the Monopoly guy. I think of Ace Ventura when nature calls. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. So I, I know I'm going off tangent, but this guy at one point was help writing thing. I'm like, what the fuck is Monopoly going to be? You better not buy the house, or I'll kill you. If you buy the house, no, don't buy the hotel. If you buy the hotel, you're castrated. Every hotel you buy has another ball that goes bye-bye. Anytime a house seems, an asshole loses his wings. If you want to call the balls wings. You going to fly with those? Can you fly, Bobby? Yeah, you're going to fly right into a stew for Leatherface to eat. Monopoly. Get the fuck out of here with the Monopoly movie. What are you going? Fuck. What? Kevin Hart going to be the Monopoly guy? For the top hat and a cane and shit? What the fuck? He doesn't have the monocle like he did in Ace Ventura movie. Fuck. Anyway, Gattaca, good movie, good sci-fi film, good story. Actors do their jobs well. If you like science fiction, it's definitely worth a look. Uh, I like the ideas involved with the story, and I thought the actors handled their jobs well, and it was a fairly good-looking film. It kept my attention. Other than the, the murder part, which it didn't. Usually, I'm for that in a movie, but I don't know. This... You didn't even need it at the end of the day. But, uh, yeah, I liked it. Pretty damn decent foot. So thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.